What do the false prophets on YouTube and other social medias serve for the kingdom of Satan? Why is Satan using these individuals to cause confusion in the church? Well, it's exactly that. They're there to cause confusion and doubt in believers. They're, they want us and they want you to doubt your faith, to doubt God's word. They, they're very likable individuals. They're very likable. And they may look like sheep on the outside, but in the inside, the Bible says they're ravenous wolves. Usually their motive is money. Um, there's other motives, like perhaps they're actually unbelievers, and they're trying to cause other individuals to unbelieve, to um, cause them to lose their faith in God. You see, these individuals, they often claim that they heard God tell them this, that God had showed them that, and it's all false, because we know that our God is not a liar. The Bible says, let it not be so, but let every man be a liar, but let God be the speaker of truth. So these individuals do not represent God. They may look like Christians. They may act like Christians, but they are not in any way um, servants of our Lord. What they often do is they cause believers to doubt their faiths. They cause them to, and you might be saying, well, you know, every believer is, is um, responsible for their own belief or their own understandings. And that's true. There's a lot of believers that are, I hate to say it, but they're lazy. They don't read the scriptures themselves. They want to be fed scriptures. They want to be entertained by seducing spirits. They always seek uh, preachers that will itch their ears, basically tell them that they're awesome, that they're amazing, that they're on the um, good side, which is Often, many times, they are and they aren't, okay? But these, pre, these pastors, they're very seductive. They, they know what to say. They, they, they're well-spoken. They know how to speak um, because they've been trained to be that way. They know how to seduce individuals into believing their words. And here's the thing, though. Here's how you tell them apart, okay? First of all, if their prophecy doesn't come true, you know that they're not a prophet of God. They're not. If they say that God told them this specific thing would happen and it doesn't happen, and of course, they, you know, there's some uh, preachers, some, some prophets in the Old Testament who said, hey, if you don't turn from your way, then this is going to happen. See, but the prophet is clear about the precondition. He says, hey, based on, this condi on these conditions, if, if this happens, then the result will be the following. But many, all, let's, let's be honest, let's be honest, these prophets today on YouTube who claimed that Trump would win said he would win. They didn't say, oh, if America repents, if they um, do this and that, then, then you know, Trump would win, okay? Because that's not a prophecy, that's just common sense. If all of America had Christian values, Trump would have won. That's not a prophecy. That's just common sense. And that, and that precondition is just common sense. Okay. So beware these false prophets, because their job is to cause confusion, to cause you to doubt your faith, to doubt God. They put their word at the level of God's word. Okay. Back in the Old Testament, back in the old days before grace, these individuals were stoned to death. I'm not saying to, to stone them, but it's because, it's because of the seed that they plant in the church. They sow confusion. They sow fear. And that's what they want. They want us to be fearful of the future. They, want, they, they don't build our faith, right? And in fact, a lot of these false preachers are saying, hey, look forward to four more years of peace and prosperity four more years of grace when the bible says that there isn't going to be a revival no there isn't nay nay no there will not be a revival when christ comes there will be instead a great falling away meaning there's going to be hardly any christians the great majority of individuals will be anti-christian or they won't they won't be christians at all okay they won't necessarily be anti but they won't be christians at all 
because there's going to be a great falling away. People are going to get out of the church. It's already happening. People are leaving the churches thanks to COVID. And now these false prophets, they're causing a great multitude of individuals to lose their faith in God and what they trust. They can't even trust themselves anymore. They can't trust who to listen to anymore because they placed all their faith in man and not in God. They're placing their faith in mankind and people and individuals and personalities and idols and not in God. You need to understand this. You guys need to repent of this. Repent of listening to seducing spirits because these individuals, they're saying they were, they were prophesizing that there was going to be, oh, Trump is going to be president. There's going to be, you know, everybody's going to get all, all God's people are going to get good money. Not all of them, but a great majority, you know, certain individuals will get money in their pockets. The, the change in wealth would happen and many of God's prophets and people will get the money and they'll work for the kingdom of God. No, no, that's not how Jesus works. Okay. Jesus didn't need money to build the kingdom. And in fact, we're not going to you know, Christians are not going to live happily ever after in this world. If you if you are living living happily ever in this world, you're not suffering the persecution of Christ. The Bible promises and says that if you follow Christ, the world will reject you. The world will hate you. Jesus says, if, if it hates you, know that it hated me first. The world will, will, will reject you. And there's a lot of people taking advantage of this confusion confusion. And they're trying to build their own channels that are, you know, they're preaching a word that is contrary to God's word. They're saying, they're like, even this with these prophets, they're using these prophets to say, hey, you see what they're preaching is wrong. Listen to what I'm saying. And these individuals are very vulgar. They're, they, you know, they're, they're words. But the, Jesus says, Any, if, if, you know, if you have something to say, let it be yay or nay. If you have a disagreement, say yeah, yes or no. Anything more than this comes from the devil. In fact, Jesus rebuked his most trusted apostle and said, Satan, get behind me. Because we know that these individuals in the church, even the, the, the top individuals, can be susceptible to Satan, to the words of Satan. And they don't have a kingdom mindset, which is, hey, we're going to suffer in this world, and but we're going to inherit eternal life. We're going to build our treasure in heaven. We're not going to build it on earth. And if you have the Holy Spirit in you, you're going to bear the fruits of the Holy Spirit. You're going to bear the fruits of the Holy Spirit, which is peace, patience, kindness, love, um, endurance, right? All those things are fruits of the Spirit living in you if you've been baptized and, be, and your mind has been renewed and you've been reborn. You have to be reborn. Remember, Jesus says you have to be reborn to be saved. Because when you were born and you get baptized in water and in the Holy Spirit, you inherit eternal life. Now, Jesus, people say, well, you know, the, the, the um, thief on the cross. Well, he died, but he wasn't baptized. But remember, Jesus also says that he will forgive whoever he wants to forgive. Right? He says, it's not up to you. I'm going to forgive who I want to forgive. And... Jesus knew, only God would know this, right? That that individual who confessed Jesus and gave his life to Jesus at that moment on the cross, he knew that he would be worthy, that if he were to keep living, that he would follow Jesus Christ. Because Jesus, God, see, God judges the, judges the heart of a person. He knows who that person is and how he would walk. And so Jesus knew that that individual, right? If he had, another, if he had any time left, he would have followed him. And so Jesus told him, you know, you will be with me in paradise. So just beware of these false prophets, guys. Beware, beware, beware. Always test what they say to Scripture. And they can quote Scripture, right? But make sure that the Scripture that they quote actually is saying what they're saying. And also, don't just let them cherry-pick Scripture, meaning you know, just focus zero in on one little scripture. You have to read the context around the scripture to understand it. It's like when you went back in fourth grade, you have to use your context clues. You have to, you know, look at different parts of the book to see if that certain piece, that, that scripture is li really saying what they're trying to say it's saying. So you have to look at different parts of the Bible that correlate, that relate to that verse in the Bible to see how they relate. 
Anyways, have a blessed day, guys. Take care and sayonara.